Well, hello everybody in YouTube land. This is Jay Kladek. Wanted to brief you on a project I'm currently working on. Yes, I know it's been a while since my last one. Uh, but anyway, a lot of you people remember that at around the beginning of the year I did a inbox review of the Dragon Gemini spacecraft with Spacewalker. Well, I obtained a total of two of those kits and one of them I am going to do up as the stock version of the model with the spacewalking astronaut outside the craft. But I decided I wanted to also do a Titan II launch vehicle, such as you see here. But I was not willing to wait for Dragon to uh, come out with one and, well, I'm a little light on my budget right now and I didn't really have the money to afford being able to get one of uh, the real space Gemini Titan 2's from uh, Glenn Johnson so I decided to do the next best thing which is use model rocket parts to make one. Um, the model that you see in front of you is 172 scale. Well, lengthwise it's 172 scale uh, Diameter-wise, it's using a segment of STs of an STs BT60 body tube, which is a commonly available tube. You can get you can get them by themselves, or you can get them with certain rocket kits. And <clears throat> specifically, the some of the other parts I'm using actually come from an old uh, Gemini Titan II kit that uh, STs did circa 1987 which was a 173rd scale Gemini Titan II. Um, I got pretty far along with building one of those several years ago, but I never did completely finish it, and I wasn't particularly happy with the, with the results of the model I was building, but I saved all the parts in preparation for a rainy day when my skills were good enough that I could tackle that project once again, and, well, this is the result. Uh, sitting next to it is the um, Dragon Mercury Redstone in 172 scale, which you remember from one of my last videos. Yeah, I know. I didn't get very far along with it. I'm, I'm a little weird like that in that I get interest in a project, I work on it for a, for a while, and then sometimes I just lose interest and I just feel like I want to stop for a while and work on something else. Well, in the case of the Redstone, it was kind of that deal, and, well... I decided I wanted to work on the Gemini Titan instead for a while, so this is this is my current project. Anyway, give me a moment and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing with this uh, with this Titan and give you some instructions for how you could potentially build one of your own if you want to do something similar. Well, okay then. Um, it's a little easier to photograph this rocket when I got it laying on its side like that. Uh, but anyway, let's start with the capsule work. Haven't glued everything together yet. But anyway, we got the uh, Dragon Gemini right here. Pretty much built out of the box. The one thing that's nice about that Dragon kit is you get one open hatch and two closed hatches. Well, since I'm not building this particular Gemini with an open interior. I just went ahead and used the closed hatches. It also meant I didn't have to worry about painting the interior. Um, beauty of the Dragon Kit is you do have pretty much what you need to build one of these as a launch uh, configuration vehicle. So it's got the uh, the cover that goes over the uh, the pitch horizon scanner and then there's also a cover that goes over the uh, the uh, the nose cone section. Um, on the later Geminis, it co covered up a uh, rendezvous radar or a transponder, um, also part of the pilot chute system. But anyway, the build is more or less out of the box. I haven't added the side thrusters yet because uh, one of them I do have to alter to make it more accurate. Uh, back section here, this will either become permanent or become temporary, I haven't decided yet. 
this is a piece of cut down ST's BT60 body tube, which I cut a segment out of and ran it in the uh, in the little groove that's designed to go with the uh, where the uh, the back plate on the service module is supposed to go. And I've got it taped in there temporarily later on, depending on if I use this or if I make like a uh, balsa wood round block. Um, I'll glue it in permanently. Uh, doing that, the, uh, the, f the fit was a little sloppy, so I've got some, uh, to me, a tape wrapped around it to friction it up. Um, it could be done on a, on one that you're preparing for flight, uh, for flight, yes, this is going to be a, uh, flying model rocket version of the Gemini. I'm trying to make it as detailed as I can so I can put it on display, but I'm going to try to potentially fly it once or twice. How many times I fly will ultimately depend on how good the rocket looks. If the rocket looks really good, I'm probably only going to fly it once or twice. If the construction's got a few problems, then I'll probably uh, fly it more than a few times in preparation for building a better one later on down the road. But anyway, running the tape in there, shim things up really nice, and... Well, Fits pretty good. Still a little loose, but uh, it'll work okay for my uses right now while I'm still constructing this. Now, the SD's Gemini kit, which I mentioned, um, does have a couple of pieces on it which make it perfect for this. If you can find one, it does have everything you need otherwise to make a conversion like this for the most part. Um, for instance, the the way Estes designed this kit, and there were actually two rocket kits that they designed that that were Titan II base that have this uh, set of rocket nozzles. Uh, one of them was the Gemini Titan II kit number one nine seven eight, and the second one was a Titan II ICBM. Both of them came out in the late eighties, I think. I believe it was 85, 86 for the uh, for the ICBM, and then 87 for the Titan II. Um, the ICBM was on the market for eh, probably about four or five years. The uh, the Gemini not not as long. They are pretty rare and pretty hard to find. Both those rocket kits. You can also find these nozzles in the uh, Titan III E. Although even those kits are kind of rare and a bit sought after. Um, Detail-wise, they're okay. I mean, they're perfectly good for model rock. These are display only. These are not designed for flight. And, well, they're they're adequate for display. I'm going to try to add some details to them to ma make them look better. Um, Gemini engine nozzles are pretty intricate looking, so uh, how s successful I am, I do not know yet. But uh, I think it'll look okay. It'll probably look at least as good as any desktop model you might see at a NASA center or something like that. Um, but anyway, part of what makes these uh, these kits ideal for this is a detachable fin unit. Which uh, basically slots right in, give it a twist. And the fin unit also acts as a launch mount. There's like a piece of BT-20 body tube with a with a block ring in there to keep the engine from sliding forward under thrust. It's clear, one of those little cheats in the rocket world to make a rocket look scale is to put clear fins on it even if it might not be stable enough to fly without the fins. And it's it's a good clever fiction that the fins are invisible. Yeah, they'll work for my uses. But uh, the the clear fin units come in total of four kits were released with a clear fin unit. First of all, first one was the Titan II ICBM, then the uh, Gemini Titan. The uh, third rocket to have it was a rocket called the Beta Launch Vehicle, uh, SD's kit number two zero five four, and. 
Those can be found semi-common. Uh, the fourth kit that had it, which is probably the most numerous, is the is the Estes bailout, uh, which was a rocket designed so that you could launch an action figure on your rocket and have it parachute back to Earth at Apogee. Um, the very first bailouts had a uh, clear fin unit, but the vast majority of them utilize a black fin unit, which is perfectly good for normal flying if, you, if you're not worried about the scale looks of the rocket when it's flying. I mean, in fact, if you notice, the lock ring I have on the back does come from a later bailout, um, and I believe there is a rocket coming out this year or early next which will have the uh, the black fin unit again because I I think it's basically going to be a reissue of the bailout they're just changing the name I just for the life of me can't remember what they're changing the name to so <clears throat> so it'll be nice to have this fin unit again okay these are the uh, two pieces of BT60 that I'm using for this build BT60 body tube available from Estes. Um, <clears throat> if I had wanted to, I could have made the uh, the body of the Titan one piece, but in the case of the Titan missiles, the Titan 2s and the Titan 3s, they have these openings here so, so that when the uh, the upper stage ignites, I don't think the, uh, the lower stage had any uh, retro rocket. So when the upper stage ignites to prevent a little overpressure which might cause the lower stage to explode or distort or whatever and cause the rocket to get destroyed, they have these vents which uh, allows the engine thrust to duct out as the uh, as the first stage comes off. And I decided I wanted to represent that on my rocket give myself a little more challenge, as it were. Make it look like a nice display model and not just something that looks like a, like a tube with a couple of rocket engines and a Dragon model strapped to the top. I want to give myself a little difficulty. So I cut down a piece of one of the, cut down uh, the tubes to the proper lengths. Uh, total length of a of a body tube on a on a Gemini Titan in 172 scale is about well total length is about uh, a little over 13 inches. Uh, stage one is about eight and eleven sixteenths inches, which includes the length of the back segment. And stage two is about four and uh, four and three eighths inches. The reason why I cut it like I did is so it'll be a little easier to uh, fill in the openings and make everything look like it's one piece again. Uh, cutting the tube was not that hard. Um, cutting the little holes in there is a little difficult. One thing that helps a lot when you're working on model rocket body tubes, especially stuff that's made out of the lighter weight cardboard as opposed to higher strength phenolic is one thing you can do to make this stuff a little easier to cut when you're doing shaping like this is actually wick some uh, thin CA glue, also known as super glue, into the into the uh, the paper wraps on the inside. And what that does is it soaks in, it dries, and it makes the tube much stronger. Almost kind of the same principle as uh, applying fiberglass tape to a, a radio control airplane model. Same difference. You wick the glue into the into the threads of the tape and it dries rock hard and reinforces and makes it a lot stronger. Um, then it was just easier to saw into it, a lot like you're sawing into plastic and cut it out. The, uh, the holes were drilled with a cordless Dremel with a small engraving bit. Um, some of my holes are not quite straight but at this point I just want to get the uh, thing done. It I'll see how it looks under painting. Um, now, in order to make this thing a flyable rocket, I had to do something clever to get the engine, the ejection charge, to go through the rocket without venting out the side holes. 
So what I had to do was I had to make a uh, combination engine mount and stuffer tube. This is a piece of long length BT-20, which I got from my local hobby shop. BT-60 BT centering rings, which I also got from the hobby shop. Um, there, there is a little uh, there is like a uh, an engine spacer piece in there to keep the engine from sliding forward and I did all the measurements to make sure it was in there at the right position. Um, right here this uh, spot right here corresponds to the hole in the rocket stage just like that and what this curvy piece is right here which represents the uh, the top of one of the fuel tanks on the on the uh, Titan 1 first stage is it's a cut down piece of aft end cap from a space shuttle external tank model uh, specifically out of a Lindbergh 1200 scale space shuttle kit. I don't like those Lindbergh kits very much but uh, well I got a couple of them that I'm using for kit bash parts so I zing the end off the uh, external tank and ground it down and sanded it and represents a uh, domed end cap really nice and so I'll paint this to look pretty good this area here is going to be painted black I got two more centering rings for the top here ah, there we go so just imagine you got the first stage right here here's the upper stage uh, more centering rings means that your rocket's going to be straighter when you put it back together. But the um, reason why I'm using two centering rings on the top is this: uh, the top section is also going to double as uh, the shock cord mount. Because if any of you have ever built Estes rockets, you know they got this little uh, shock cord mount that you kind of fold over and slather with glue. Those work okay, but sometimes they fail, and I don't want this one to fail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... It's only taped in there temporarily. I'm going to punch a small hole in the uh, top centering ring, wrap a knot around the shock cord so it goes around the, the tube for a nice solid fit, glue it all together, and then it'll come out and into the, uh, to the upper body tube where I'll attach it to a parachute, probably an 18-inch or a 12-inch chute. But... Uh, Clever little bit of engineering. This uh, stuffer tube measures a little under nine and three quarter inches long. I recommend if you cut one, cut it to about nine and three quarter, nine point seventy five inches, and it'll work. Um, if you can't get a hold of a uh, of one of the Estes rockets kits that has these engine nozzles, you could also download a paper model and. I'll print out the engine nozzles and print them out yourself in the right scale and go ahead and make them. I think they'd look okay. Or else a um, couple engine bells, probably a couple ripped off from a shuttle kit would probably work. Of course you'd have to make all this stuff up top and wait until I get done with that you'll see when I'm done these will only have a passing resemblance to what they are now. They should look a lot better. We'll see. Well, in case you're wondering where you can find references for a Gemini Titan II, um, this is one book that I have in my collection, which comes in really handy for that. It's uh, Rockets of the World by Peter Alway. This is, I think, second or third edition. There's, there's a fourth edition that's come out. I, I can't remember if it's 3rd edition or 4th edition, um, which is sold by a company called ARA Press. They also do a couple of sci-fi themed uh, books. But uh, what makes this book really nice is you have... you got paint patterns, but each rocket has got a set of references for what the uh, the full-size uh, rocket's dimensions were. And scale those down properly, you can get an idea of how big you need to make it in miniature. The Titan II, for instance, this is what there is. Um, 
If you build model rockets the, and are a member of uh, National Association of Rocketry, they actually do have a uh, contest called uh, Scale Rocketry. Um, and providing documentation for that is very important. So this gives you the actual dimensions and inches. It's also got dimensions for uh, several of the Russian rockets. This one is a Cosmos satellite launcher, for instance, a modification of a of a uh, intermediate range ballistic missile, I believe. Um, another reference that I'm using for this particular project is uh, Mike Mikowski's Space and Miniature Two. This book is out of print, but I believe you can order a photocopied version from spaceinminiaturealloneword.com but uh, as you can see it covers several of the details of uh, the Gemini Titan although it primarily focuses on the Gemini spacecraft um, Sven Knudsen's website I'll have that address in the uh, description also has some of the uh, some Gemini Titan dimensions, including a wrap, as it were, that can be downloaded the uh, the in uh, in Adobe PDF format. He's originally got it drawn up in uh, 124 scale, but you can scale it down and print it. I also found out that later versions of Photoshop, you can actually extract that image from the PDF turned into something else and actually altered the dimensions that way, which I had to do because I needed to keep the uh, standard rocket length without and um, size down the uh, the circumference of it because I'm using a body tube that's not quite 172 scale and I had to do that without distorting the length so Photoshop allows me to do that pretty easily and this is also going to be used as uh, reference targets for uh, some of these rectangles and stuff for painting and it'll come in really handy well in any event that's where I am right now um, I'm not gonna pin myself to an estimate as to how long it will take for me to finish this because as you know every time I do that I never seem to finish it when I say I'm gonna finish it so I'm saying okay I'm not gonna give you an estimate I'm just going to work on it and I'm going to finish it. As for a coming attraction, and one of the reasons why it's taken me so long to come up with an update is I've been having a little fun with this bad boy. This is the body for a 170th scale Saturn 1B uh, rocket is used in the Apollo and the Skylab programs puts into perspective just how big a Gemini is I mean you can remember the redstone came up to about here well Gemini only comes up to just a little over the uh, the length of a uh, first stage of a Saturn 1B this is a rocket kit made by the company Simrock and it's a clone of a <coughs> excuse me of an Estes model rocket that came out in the 1960s. There's also another one made by Apogee, uh, also 170th scale, which is more detailed, but it also costs about three times as much as this. This only costed about 70 bucks, whereas the Apogee one costs upwards of 200 bucks, and I don't really have the uh, the budget right now to get an Apogee kit. But um, just to put in perspective, the uh, the Mercury Red Sun that I'm working on. These are the uh, the first stage. the The fuel and oxidizer fuel tanks of the Saturn One B are actually made up of lengthened Redstone rocket rocket bodies. Kind of a clever way that uh, Marshall Space Flight Center reused resources that they had, so that they that way they have, didn't have to tool up any exotic materials when they when they made the first stage of the One B. They saved all that work for the Saturn V, but as you can see, a couple of big projects in the works. The uh, 
This one's probably taken me about, I eh, probably got about three months into it. Um, I'm getting close to the home stretch. There's there's a few things I have to add to it. But uh, by comparison, the Gemini I can get done a lot quicker. Unfortunately, we, uh, I'd also like to say, rest in peace, Neil Armstrong. You inspired a lot of people, including me. Um, great guy. Wish we still had him, but we all have to carry on our own way. In any event, that's what I've got, and thank you for watching.